rainforest is the best place to live. Next interview, I think I'll start with the next question. <laughs> You want to learn some Favonia's blade work? <laughs> alright then, I'll teach you. Oh yes, I'll teach you alright. Mark my word. Well, there won't be any problems if the feast starts at that time. Everything has already been prepared. Mr. Zubair, I finished tallying things up here. Well, except for the guests. Is a simple reply really that much to ask of our guests? It's affecting our arrangements! It'll be fine. Besides, it never hurts to get things ready in advance. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. The feast will be held sooner or later, right? haven't even replied yet. Huh? Are we the only ones that have arrived? Yeah. I had someone deliver letters to all of our guests. 
But maybe everyone is still busy with other things. Look, I get it. Sumeru is in an extremely important period of transition right now, but even if your friends are important figures, they shouldn't just ignore your request like this. Nilu is Sumeru's number one celebrity after all. <laughs> you have no idea how happy I am to talk to people with good taste. If you consider enjoying Nilu's dances having good taste, then almost everybody has good taste. Because Paimon thinks everybody will love her performance. That's right. We all think she's amazing, too. Nilu is an absolute favorite among those of us who frequent the Grand Bazaar. For Outlanders, you have a great eye. Master Zubair, let's have a vote for the most outstanding audience members next time. <laughs> I think these two may win. Nonsense! It is not for us to determine the value of an audience. But, indeed, we could try giving gifts to people with particularly good taste. I heard there's a device in Fontaine called a camera that can record people's appearances as pictures. Such pictures would make superb gifts. Ooh, good idea. I wonder where we can find one. <laughs> you guys are so funny. There's really no need for that. I'm satisfied just being able to perform here. There's always a lot going on at the Grand Bazaar. Yeah, and that's why I love it here. Traveler and Paimon, could you help confirm if the letters were actually... If for some reason they didn't receive the letters, then please... Yeah, we can also check out how everything in Sumeru is going now. Hmm. When I wrote the letters, I heard that Dia was in Port Ormos, and Alhatham was at the Academia. As for Sino, we've only heard that he appears at the Academia from time to time. I'm not too sure about Rahman's whereabouts. My guess is that he's with Dia. As for Dunyarzad, I just hope she's feeling better. I sent her a letter, but I was afraid of disturbing her. If you have time, please ask about her for me. Okay, got it. Let's go, Traveler. God, my comeuppance.
get them anywhere. Uh, let's ask that person over there. <clears throat> hey there, have you seen Al Haytham around? Yes, it seems Scribe Al Haytham has gone to the house of Dana. You should be able to find him there. But you're already the second group of people I've seen looking for him today. He must be quite the busy man. Oh? Who else was looking for him? Mr. Cave was just here asking about him. You wouldn't believe how terrible their relationship is. And now you two are here. Don't tell me everyone's here looking for gossip about the sages. We're strictly here on business. <laughs> ah, I see. Sorry, I thought maybe everyone's as interested in rumors about the sages as I am. should be around here somewhere, right? Oh, he's over there! But it looks Just put down that worthless book and tell me- This is not just some worthless book. Do you have any idea- It doesn't matter, it's probably just another thing that you used your authority to get your hands on anyway. Just put it aside. Listen, I came- Oh, you sound surprised. Would I be here asking you if I knew? You're the scro- Well, I almost be- Huh? Oh, don't sound too surprised now. You're the renowned Kave, light of the Kasharawar. Besides, as a master builder and craftsman, chances are you'll be appointed- Hmm, why do I feel like you don't really mean it? Huh, what makes you say that? Why would you question my heartfelt sincerity? Maybe it's because you've never said anything. Yeah, well, I share a similar sentiment. And anyone who knows you as well as I do would surely do the same. Ah, oh, you... See? This is why I hate discussing anything with you. Your ridiculous and arrogant attitude always gets in the way. <laughs> it seems that you really can't stand my personality. Ha! <laughs> what was your first clue? Well... Then you might as well move out of my house. Are you threatening me? Stooping to a new low, I see. Ugh, and don't change the subject. 
You? A sage? <laughs> what a joke. The Academia might as well just close tomorrow. Are they... having a fight? <sighs> Forget what's going on with the Academia. Haven't you been busy with your construction project? Tell me, when are you going to build yourself a mansion? Don't get me started. I get angry just thinking about it. So, what great building did our master architect work on this time? Like I need to tell you. Keep your nose out of my business. No, I think we deserve to know. Where were you when Sumeru needed you most? I was in the desert for a large project, but considering Haravatat's utter ignorance of architectural and aesthetic matters, you probably wouldn't understand. Oh, which is truly unfortunate. I can only pity the man who doesn't understand the first thing about beauty and romance. Unlike a true... Uh, hold on, uh, wait a second. What do you mean by when Sumeru needed me most? Well... While you were out fiddling around in the desert, many people came together to save Sumeru from a crisis. Ha! And you think I'd believe that? Look, all you really need to know is that Azar and all his accomplices have all been overthrown. Huh? What nonsense are you talking about? <laughs> it's no skin off my nose if you don't believe me. It's not like my Darshan was the one trying to apply for funding from the Grand Sage. Hmm... Yours, though, on the other hand. You know what? I'll ask around. I'm sure someone knows what's going on here. You're dead if I find out you're lying to me. Oh, it's you two. What's the matter? We're running some errands for Nilu. Have you received her letter? Letter? Nilu said she sent out a letter inviting everyone to a celebration feast in two days at the Grand Bazaar. We'll also be celebrating Zaino's reinstatement as General Mahamatra. If she addressed the letter to all Haytham of the Academia, then the letter should have gone to my office. I've been busy these days, so I haven't had time to check for any new mail at my office. I only now have some free time to attend to personal matters. Have you always been so busy with your work? Of course not. I'm only busy these days because several sages have been dismissed recently and the whole academia was practically turned upside down. Kainari told us they all went to train in the Avidia Forest. Apparently they will spend the rest of their lives there. That is already the best possible ending for the likes of them. Four of the six great sages were possessed by their desire for power and attempted to create a new god. In order to pull it off, they even imprisoned the other two rational sages. To imagine such things could take place in the academia. Hmm. I don't know where to begin. You're right! Huh. Feels kind of strange to hear them call that after all this time. But then again, the six great schools sounded pretty impressive too. Yes, at least that's how they're supposed to sound. It's said that when the Academia was first founded, the Dendro Archon herself established the six great schools, each representing one of the six different types of wisdom. Numerous Darshans have sprung up and faded, only the six Darshans attaching themselves to the six great schools have stood the test of time and obtained permanent seats in the academia. Now, the six Darshans are nearly synonymous with the six great schools, and the leaders selected for the schools are the six great sages. Among the six great sages, there is one central leader, the Grand Sage. Unfortunately, only the sages from Vahumana and Amorta remain now. They were imprisoned for opposing Azar, and were only rescued after Azar's downfall. So who's managing things 
rooms in the other four schools now. Do they need to find someone new? Yes. Normally, new sages are selected based on a strict set of criteria. Oh, didn't you just say something about becoming a sage? If they pick you, then we'd have a huge connection in Sumeru! Yes, about that. <clears throat> you didn't let me finish my sentence. The person in charge of personnel affairs nominated me to be the Grand Sage in place of Azar and help Lesser Lord Kusanali manage the Academia. But... I refused. Huh? But... why? Ugh, can you be a little more ambitious? I'm not even interested in being one of the six great sages. Like I said before, I don't like being a leader. That's not my job either. I'm only responsible for handling important affairs within the Academia before the new sages take office.
<laughs> and the first thing I'll do is reject Kisharawar's application for funding. By the way, who was that other person just now? Is he your friend? Do we look like friends? Paimon doesn't know! That's why Paimon's asking! His name is Kave, My roommate. You could say he's the representative for Ksharwar Scholars. Which is exactly why he always has so many problems. So everything that's happened recently must be a huge change for the people of Sumeru. Such is the work of the Academia Scribe. Well, anyway, no matter how busy you are, since you are our planner, remember to attend the celebration feast in two days. All right. I'll see you there. I'm doing well. I can go as far as saying I have never been happier in my entire life. I don't know if you've heard, but Elazar has completely disappeared, and all the patients have recovered. Are you kidding? Knowing them and the connections they've got, I'm sure they've heard about it.
That's right. My lady is feeling better now, so I'm accompanying her for a walk. Why do you still call me that, Dia? You've already informed my father of your resignation. <laughs> I guess I'm just used to calling you my lady. Old habits die hard. Resignation? You're yeah, I might start losing my edge if I keep being a bodyguard for the Homayanis. You know that my parents and I are fond of you, and that we appreciate you very much. <laughs> uh, it wouldn't be a problem if you wish to continue to be our bodyguard. <laughs> I'm not a woman that's easily persuaded. You should know that by now, my lady. When I took this job, I had already decided that I'd quit as soon as you'd recovered. It's time for me to get back out there and chase that horizon. So what are you going to do now if you're not going to be a bodyguard anymore? <laughs> I want to take a risky job, and put my body to the test again. Huh? But... we literally just finished one of the most dangerous jobs ever! Are you getting bored already? I know. If I hadn't joined in that plan with you, I wouldn't have come up with this idea. I guess I still get fired up by that feeling of going all out in a fight. It made me realize that I'm still a mercenary through and through. Life is short, and I'm happy that I got to be a part of that operation. But the whole thing also made me realize that there are still many problems in Sumeru. And as a desert dweller, I'm still not completely ready to settle down on this side of the wall. Well, I remember a friend had someone bring you a message. You mean I'll hate them? <laughs> I didn't expect him to still remember that. I thought he was joking. We just came from talking with I'll hate them at the academia. Did he tell you that he suggested that I come work at the Academia? What? I heard that Azar and his cronies fell from power, and all Haytham told me that now was a good time to find a job in the Academia, but only if I wanted to. Whoa! Paimon can't see you being anything other than a mercenary! <laughs> me neither. Uh, but I think Dia would look great dressed up as a scholar. Ugh! Ugh, forget about it. I wouldn't last ten seconds in there. I'll hate them probably just like the way I worked and knew I'm good in a fight. So he suggested I find some work in the academia. But you know, if you take him up on the offer, Sino might actually agree and let you become a Matra. Because you're super amazing! <laughs> the Matra have all the talent they need as long as they have Sino. I prefer to be free to live however I choose. In fact, I chose this job from the very start because I knew it would be right up my alley. Even if being a mercenary means facing all kinds of danger. A lion has to return to the wild sooner or later. If anything, being your bodyguard has been unfamiliar territory for me. I don't want to see you go, but I'll respect your decision. I'm glad to hear you say that. Come on, no need for the sad face. It's not like we'll never meet again. Once the whole Dendro Archon thing is settled, everything in Sumeru will take a turn for the better. That makes me happy too. But a peaceful society will probably mean less demand for mercenaries like me. Before long, we'll be a dying breed. So I'd better get to work while I still can. Huh? But, wait a second! You make it sound like you're leaving now! Well, no. Not yet, at least. I promised my lady I'd stick around until next week. 
so have you been in Port Ormos this entire time? We were wondering if you had received a letter from Nilu. Oh, uh, did Nilu write to us? She heard that you were seen in Port Ormos, so she sent the letter here. Huh. It was probably sent to the inn that we're staying at. My lady has been very energetic lately and keeps taking me on hikes, staying out even into the night. By the time we get back, the receptionist is usually off napping on the job. Right, and we tend to leave quite early in the morning, so the old man on duty is also usually dozing off. So what it really sounds like is that the person on duty is always asleep. I bet the letter's at the reception desk. I'll go check later. No wonder there wasn't a reply. You never received the letter. Good thing Nilu asked us to come and check on that. Ah, uh, sorry to make you two come all the way out here. It must be something important for Nilu to specifically write to us like that. Yes, she said they were preparing a victory feast in the Grand Bazaar, and we'll also be celebrating Sino's reinstatement as General Mahamatra. She was hoping you could come. Great, I'll be sure to attend. Count me in, too. But is there some sort of dress code or anything for the feast? Can I just show up looking like this? Since it's being organized by Nilu, I don't think she'll be too picky about that. If anything, I think she wants to see us as our most natural selves. All right, then this is how I'll show up. The feast will be held in two days, so don't forget! Sure. Thank you so much for letting us know. We'll see you there. Oh, by the way, do you happen to know where Sino and Raman are? The General Mahamatra always comes and goes without a trace. Normally, no one knows his whereabouts. Oh. But last time we met, he mentioned that he had something to do in Aru Village. You can try your luck there. As for Raman, your guess is as good as mine. I only remember he said that he had something to discuss with Sino. You can ask Sino when you meet him. Don't mention it. You better get going. All right, on to our next stop. We last visited Aru Village. Ah, there's Sino! Hmm.
What brings you here? We recovered well, and Tanari agreed to let us leave, so now we're out and about again. It seems Gandarvaville's medical treatment is still as good as ever. Mm-hmm. And Tanari is recovering well, too. That's good to hear. Welcome. Tainari has excellent medical skills, and Kale is quite attentive. It was the best place for you. But why are you just standing here like a dead tree? I'm meeting some people. Oh, you mean Candace? I've already talked with Candace and the village chief. They're still at the usual place. You can go there if you'd like to see them. But you know one of the people I'm meeting as well. Oh. By King Deshret's blessing, my friend suddenly appears in the desert. <laughs> Don't tell me you've run into trouble and need us to help now. Roman! And... huh? Sataria? Oh, you... know me? Oh, well, uh... you're pretty famous in the academia. Don't worry, these are our friends. No need to be so guarded. I see. I'm doing well. Many good things have happened recently. Same here. Really, I feel that my whole life has started to shine after suddenly finding a new direction. Oh, tell us everything. Yeah, you go ahead. All right, well, I suppose I should start by saying... I've decided to leave the Academia. What? It's not that I've given up on being a scholar. Instead, you could say I've found a new identity. I will no longer pursue research like a typical scholar, but I have not completely given up on my relationship to knowledge either. <laughs> I can see what you're saying now. Uh, what do you mean? I plan to leave the academia and return to teach here in the desert. Wow, so you want to become a teacher? Sitaria will return to support education here and teach people from the desert. She can't teach everyone on her own, but there are many of us Eremites all over Sumeru. She came to discuss a collaboration with me and hoped that I could bring her ideas to the Eremites. Yes, it's my hope that the Eremites can help me select a group of smart people with the best aptitude for teaching. I'll teach them, and after they've finished learning from me, they can go educate more people. That is the true meaning of education and the spreading of knowledge. The people of King Deshret suffer from sandstorms, exile, and ignorance. Miss Ataria is more than welcome to come teach here. Her arrival is like a star shining in the desert night. The stars have always guided caravans, thieves, soldiers, and travelers who get lost in the night. They lead those in the dark out of trouble and back to safety. Oh, please. Where's all of this coming from? I'm starting to feel a little embarrassed. You deserve these compliments. Mercenaries are accustomed to danger and don't fear death, which is why we recognize extraordinary actions that common people would easily overlook. Setaria's idea will bring much good to many people. At first, I feared it was destined to fail. Everyone knows that the Academia doesn't allow scholars to teach in the desert without permission. As you know, all knowledge is under their surveillance and control, and very few desert dwellers are as lucky as me. But what I heard at that time has been haunting my heart, as if there were lightning bolts constantly bombarding my soul. Sataria, you tread a treacherous path, and the longer you ignore it, the tighter the Academia's grasp on you will become. 
Sataria, why haven't you gone home? Never forget that the desert that belongs to you lies elsewhere. <sighs> Miss. These words sparked something in me, and I knew that I had to bring something back to my people after going home. I gathered up the courage to approach the Grand Sage, only to find that he was no longer at the Academia. Lord Sino told me that Azar didn't belong there anymore. Azar has received much needed punishment. Though, if you ask me, it may have been too light. <sighs> you probably have already heard. Lord Sino helped me obtain permission to leave the Academia for the desert, and accompanied me here to discuss collaboration with members of the Eremites. My plan was able to go smoothly thanks to him and Ramon. You're all doing so much for the desert! Aside from that, I also have some other business to discuss with Sino. Lesser Lord Kusanali has allocated many resources to support and develop the desert. I've done some business for her and part of it required the assistance of the Eremites. I applied for a few batches of educational materials from the Academia, and sent them to several groups in the desert, as instructed by Lesser Lord Kusanali. I believe the people will make good use of them. That's exactly what the people here need. Physical books and other related items. If it weren't for Sino and Lesser Lord Kusanali, I'm afraid we'd never be able to get our hands on them. Apart from this, the Academia is also recruiting scholars that are willing to teach in the desert. I'll let you and Satarian know as soon as I have any more news. We must be persistent about this, and maintain these resources to ensure long-term effectiveness. This is the first time in hundreds of years we've had a glimmer of hope. I think this may be the turning point for the desert. Remember these words. Here lies our faithful priest, Kasala. His wisdom is a miracle among the people, deserving of high praise and admiration. I hope people with wisdom like that priest will rise again among the desert dwellers. Then we'll once again see the wisdom and glory that once shook the world. Enough about us. Are you here to discuss some business too? No, not at all. We're actually here on behalf of Milu. Nilu wanted to write to everyone, but she wasn't sure where the letters should be sent, so she asked us to come find everyone personally. A celebration feast will be held in two days at the Grand Bazaar. She hopes that all of you will be able to attend. At the feast, we'll also be celebrating Sino's reinstatement as General Mahamatra. Uh, although, judging from your appearance, it seems you've already been reinstated. Paimon thought you would only start working for the Academia after the feast. Celebration? Feast? It's the first I've heard of it. Tainari was right. He really didn't know. <laughs> this feast is for you, Sino. Sounds to me like you'll have to be there. <laughs> it's rare to see that kind of expression from Lord Sino. You must not like feasts very much. No, not really. But I'll go. Well, I still have a lot to handle here. Besides, I need to look after Miss Sataria in the desert, so I'll have to pass. I'm afraid I won't be able to join you. Although, if you'd be so kind, please give a message to Miss Nilu for me. The message is... I'm sorry for how I treated you before, but now I understand the beauty of your dance. It's like a light shining in the sky. You and the art you symbolize are not only beautiful, but also lively and powerful. So much so that it was prohibited. Please keep dancing, and someday... I'll be able to appreciate your art in person. Okay, we've got all that down! Our job here is complete as well! Oh, Sino, remember?
remember, party's in two days. Make sure you're there. Got it. about the well-being of my retinue during my impromptu absence. I'm sure the good people of the Adventurer's Guild are absolutely fine, main Fräulein. ones to arrive. You're here. Ah, there you are. Well, look who finally decided to show up. You look like you came here immediately after finishing up some work. I'm very happy to see you here. But we're not late, are we? It's just that everyone else arrived ahead of time. 
I propose that the last one who arrived be put in charge of today's speeches. Nah, there won't be any speeches today. Oh, really? Well, even better. Come join us over here. Let's share some great food and drinks, and chat about all sorts of fun things. Everything looks quite good. Wow! Hyman can't wait! Traveler, just look at all the delicious food here! Delicious! Oh, this grilled meat tastes amazing! The food was specially prepared for you by everyone in the Grand Bazaar. And we have gifts that were sent by the residents of Sumeru City when they heard we were holding a feast. Everyone that came said that you saved Sumeru and wanted me to thank you all on their behalf. Ah, feels kind of nice to be seen as a hero. I could get used to this. Being a bodyguard is also a hero's job. You've always been amazing, Dia. <laughs> My lady sure has a way with words. Thanks. I'm glad to hear it. And I'm happy to meet everyone that participated in the great plan. Don't mention it. Come to think of it, we've really done something impressive together. It's unbelievable! We owe it to our abilities. And luck. Really? Why do I remember everybody thinking that luck was against us and feeling like we hardly had a chance of succeeding? That's how I remember it, too. It's luck that brought us together, and it was luck that let us form a team. Then, it took even more luck for us to formulate a plan and implement it successfully. Moreover, judging from the results, everything worked out well. Yeah, everyone gave it their all when it mattered most. It was almost like a performance. We took the stage and put on our best show. Everyone played their part. And thanks to everyone's efforts, the performance was a great success. So, would you say we're good actors too? It's such a blessing that Lesser Lord Kusanali was able to return to power at the Academia. Yes, even after being abandoned and neglected so many times, she's finally returned. Uh-huh. Lesser Lord Kusanali once seized all her power in a great disaster, which resulted in her losing all her wisdom and memories of the past. The Academia basically abandoned her because of it. This should be something everybody should remember. Huh? You look surprised. I didn't say anything wrong, did I? No, everything you said is correct. <sighs> That's good. Something wrong? Yeah, what's with that face? You knew all of this already. Even if those two giants of the Academia are here, I still have to say it. Those sages really have some nerve. Five hundred years ago, Lesser Lord Kusanali used all her power for the people of Sumeru. And what did they do in return? If you bite the hand that feeds you, don't act surprised when it turns into a knuckle sandwich, right, Sino? Perhaps I shouldn't say this, but their treatment of Lesser Lord Kusanali calls for a more severe punishment. You could simply tell Lesser Lord Kusanali that you wish to have Azar and his accomplices severely punished. I respect our deity's decision and won't interfere in any way. While we're on this topic, why didn't you accept the Academia's invitation to become the Grand Sage? Are you trying to say that I'm fit to be a sage? <laughs> Not at all. 
but every person handling the selection process has said that you are the most suitable candidate to lead the Academia right now. Why? Because he dethroned Azar from power? <clears throat> Could you try to put it another way? This is a good thing, yet you're making it sound like I overthrew Azar for my own personal gain. But seriously though, I always wondered if you had some personal motives behind it. I did have my own motive, but it had nothing to do with being a sage. If the rules of our nation were suddenly cast by the wayside, then it wouldn't be long until chaos ensued. I had no intention of letting their dreams disrupt my life. By that, you mean your life working as the Academia's scribe? Precisely. Uh, wait, is that all? So, that's the only reason why you joined us and came up with all those plans? It's reason enough. You've certainly got quite the personality. You flatter me. All right then. How about you? You've already resumed work as the General Mahamatra, right? That's right. Will you be happy with that life? It's not about being happy. There are merely a lot of things that I must do. Even so, keep your spirits up and try to be happy, okay? And try to smile more every day, just like I'm doing now. <sighs> Thank you. I'll keep that in mind. May the glory of the Princessin bring light to this world. Ah, there you are, Traveler. Well, how is it? Are you enjoying the feast today? <laughs> That's good. It's the first time I've ever invited so many exceptional people to one place. I was a little nervous myself. You see, every guest here is quite extraordinary. It's unbelievable that we've got everyone together here. Almost like a fairy tale. Make sure you live it up tonight. I'll be happy as long as you're enjoying yourselves. I'm honored to have her think of me this way. If I have a chance in the future, I would really like to invite her to one of my performances. I can't explain why. But I just feel elated right now. Thank you. The atmosphere here is good. And everything is delicious. <laughs> yeah. I don't often come to such places, but it feels quite good. I have a lot to handle these days. Otherwise, I could show you around. <laughs> There's always next time. We're friends after all. <sighs> this feast is pretty good. I like it. I seldom participate in such lively gatherings, but the atmosphere here is quite good. No, this gathering today has a unique meaning. The Grand Bazaar is lively because the people here feel happiness from the bottom of their hearts. Unlike the farces at the Academia, that happiness is an emotion that will be forever alien to those bookworms who have driven themselves insane by studying. Hmm. I seem to have taken both keys when I left the house. Hmm. Oh well.
My lady, the grilled meat over there is delicious. Have you tried it? Yes, I also tried some fruit just now. Oh, there, what an amazing place to relax. No wonder everybody likes to rest at the Grand Bazaar. You said it. Oh, look who else is here. Hello! Oh, I'm so happy Nilu invited everybody. Oh, now I have the chance to meet all the heroes. Hey, less of that polite chit-chat and more eating and drinking. The feast is about having fun, not stuffy formalities. Just fall asleep here. Paimon will go find something delicious for you to eat. You wake up once you put something yummy in your tummy. Of course, just wait here. for being a bit too self-indulgent. I was thinking about talking with you, and the next thing I knew, I had made a connection with you. The connection between us is amazing. It's like Flora and the fence it grows upon. I heard there's an amazing celebration feast today at the Grand Bazaar. I wanted to have a look for myself, so I snuck in. Lately, I've been so busy dealing with all the fallout from recent events, so I really haven't had any free time. Although you've already helped me with a lot, there's still one more thing I hope you can help me with. Please say thank you to everyone for me. Oh, is it not convenient for you to do that for me? But if I just show up all of a sudden, people will become all quiet and stiff, won't they? What if I end up scaring them and ruining this wonderful feast? That'd be the last thing I want. Okay. Yes, I have. You said I should go thank everyone as myself, right? So... I've decided to borrow your body for the time being. Please don't blame me. The floor also climbs up to the fence to... Hold up, what's going on? I didn't expect to have a conversation with the consciousness of Lesser Lord Kusanali in the Grand Bazaar. Interesting. Is this also a part of the feast? No, no, of course not. Are you... Lesser Lord Kusanali? Oh, Nilu. You know who I am? Yes, I already... 
already know every one of you. Nilu, I'll hate them. Sino, Dia, Paimon, and Dunyarzad. Lesser... Lord Kusanali? I took the liberty of occupying the Traveler's body so that I could thank all of you in person. Thank you so much for rescuing me, even if that meant placing your own safety in peril and taking the risk of becoming enemies with the Academia, the Sages, the Doctor, the Balladeer, and even the entirety of Sumeru. Without you, without any of you, I would have been in a much more difficult situation. Had you not helped me to resolve the crisis, not only I, but Sumeru and even the entirety of Tevat would have suffered great misfortune. People refer to you as the heroes who managed to rescue a god. I'm quite fond of this name. It not only explains your identities, but also bears witness to your relationship with me.
please, allow me to present to you my most sincere gratitude. Lesser Lord Kusinelli, you... You have done so much for Sumeru, and I... I, I didn't even have a chance to do anything for you. You don't have to do this. Tinyarzad, the suffering you endured during your illness is also proof of you being with me and praying for me. Thank you. You don't need to be so ceremonious. It's always been my duty to protect you. This is how the relationship between the Academia and Dendro Archon should be. We just did what was necessary and set things back on the right path. You're an Archon, but you act so humble. You really don't need to be so polite with us. I... I'm honored to have been able to take part in this plan. I hoped you liked the dance I dedicated to you. Thank you, all of you. Thank you so much.
After Nahida left, you ate a lot of food. You've become a glutton. Hmm. That just means you still have a lot to learn from Master Paimon, the Sage of Gluttony. All right, since you're awake now, should we go and have a chat with Nahida? She should be in the academia right about now. joy like a candle floating on water so are we and that's why we're here to talk with you is there anything you want to know after recent events the akasha can no longer function as it used to. i've given it some thought and have decided to shut it down permanently. But this is definitely not a bad thing. Even from the beginning, I've been planning to shut it down. The Akasha centralized administration of knowledge has always restrained people's curiosity and curtailed the number of paths available to them. I don't think this is good for Sumeru. Although people may initially feel a little uncomfortable with the loss of the Akasha, they will soon understand that this life is more suitable for them. And, as for the future of Sumeru, I'm preparing to regain control of the Academia. The former sages have received their punishment, but the new sages have yet to be selected. I hope that the new six great sages will be more focused on Akademia. The other big issue is the people of King Deshret. All the residents of the desert, in fact. They have been mistreated for far too long. I've already taken some measures to address this. It will take some time to rebuild everything. But no matter if it's culture, friendship, or trust, we will rebuild it.
happened after the doctor put you to sleep? You guessed correctly. The top-ranked Fatui Harbingers, up to number three, possess power comparable to that of gods. I was no match for him in that kind of situation. However, in spite of the bad situation, I still managed to make a fair deal with the doctor. I'm sure you remember the entity that changed your fate, the Heavenly Principles. In fact, the Heavenly Principles has been quiet since the Conria disaster 500 years ago. I used this point as leverage against the doctor. I told him that the Heavenly Principles may be awakened if I destroyed a Gnosis. Although it was just a bluff, he still fell for it. I assumed that the Heavenly Principles wouldn't just stand by and let such extensive damage to its laws take- And as for what I exchanged for the Gnosis, the exchange served as both punishment for the Doctor, as well as a boon of new knowledge that I couldn't refuse as the God of Wisdom. still in a coma. I've hidden him like how one would hide a feather. I know you have many misgivings about him, but as someone who had become a god, he has retained a number of very useful features. Don't worry, I'll keep an eye on him and make sure he doesn't do any evil. In addition, there are still some mysteries left in him. Some things may be very clear from my perspective, but he is still yet to understand them himself. His future will be determined by fate. Is that where you're headed next? As far as I know, does their Archon personally judge people? No, there's a Chief Justice in Fontaine. Generally speaking, the Hydra Archon, Fossilor, won't preside over individual trials. However, even then, Fossilor will still make herself present at just about every trial. It seems that she just likes to immerse herself in that sort of atmosphere. As Archon, she still reserves the right to influence the final verdict. Anyway, let's just say she's got, uh, a very unique personality. Are you sure? Isn't there- Huh? You mean- About your brother. While you were resting at Gandarvaville, I took some time to perform an ermine soul search for information on your brother. Yeah! Isn't ermine soul a repository for all the information and memories of Tvat? So there shouldn't be anything on her or her brother. This is true in your case. Ermine soul indeed does not have any information on you. However... There must be something different about your brother. Because, as it turns out, the world has recorded information on him after all. What? There's only one possible explanation. He belongs to this world. Makes any sense? Wasn't this your first trip to Tevat? Hmm. According to the records I was able to access, your sibling suddenly appeared in Conria. After the Conria disaster, he began his journey through the seven nations of Tevat. But just as his journey was about to reach its conclusion, what do you mean, Fuzzy? All I know for sure is that somebody. For reasons only they can know, is deliberately obfuscating his fate. And whoever it is, 
If they can do that, who knows what else they're ca- But even that wouldn't explain how he somehow comes from this world! Something else I noticed was that according to these records, the Fatui have not classified your sibling as one of the Descenders. What's a Descender? Look, I'm sure you must be curious about the information I received from the Fatui in return for my Gnosis re A very important part of the intel was about this world's Descenders. External beings, ones that don't belong to this world. Traveler, you are Tavat's fourth descender. Descenders before the Traveler, and her brother isn't even one of them? That's right. My current hypothesis is that the first descender was likely what we now call the Heavenly Principles. As for the other Descenders, I still need to verify their existence. It could take me some time.
have to burst from all this crazy new information. And yet, even knowing all this, I'm sure you must still have a lot of unanswered questions. I must say, I truly regret that I can't help you more as the God of Wisdom. There are many questions in my heart as well. I will need some time to go through, and soon, you'll also begin your journey anew, and depart from Sumeru. I'm very interested in your future. It's a journey that can't be observed or recorded by this world. If fate is the ultimate knowledge, then your future will be the ultimate fate. Paimon sure glad we got to meet you, Nahida. The pleasure is all mine. I can't thank you enough. Alright, that's enough talk for today. If you ever miss me, just close your eyes. And maybe I'll appear in your dreams. Thyself. I created another universe and found it. Nice. I, Fischl, and the Princess and Defer er oh.
on. Once again. Wow. Where did that come from? Good things come to those who don't wait around. That's what they say, anyway. Knowing my luck, the opposite is probably true for me. We go! Wait, you're that blonde traveler who's on a journey to all corners of Tevat, right? Who's asking? Do you, you bet I do. <sighs> I was worried I wouldn't be able to find you. I have a letter for you, you see. He was a crafty fellow, let me tell you. Took advantage of a loophole in our mailing system by opting for guaranteed delivery, then filling in the most obscure mailing address I've ever seen. unless we happen to go to the post office on a limb. So, um, what address did that person give you anyway? Uh, he just wrote, <clears throat> next to a small, white-haired talking fairy. What? So the address is Paimon? Yeah, exactly, right? 
and if I'd failed to deliver the letter, I'd have been bound by regulation to compensate him. Really, he got me good. I count myself very lucky that I ran into you here. Of course, here it is. Come on! Paimon wants to have a look, too! Huh? 